Now I have one table with pricing information for the products and another table with information about what the products are. I'm interested in adding the product category and product name data to the price data in average product prices. I'll navigate back to the average product prices data table and from the tables menu select join. The table that's active when I select the join command is called the main table. On the left side of the dialog, there's a list of the open data tables. I'll select products, which is now the width table. There are many options in the dialog, but for our purposes, we'll do a simple inner join matching on the columns product ID. Matching columns is the default matching specification, so I'll select product ID from the average product prices table and product ID from the products table and click match. The columns aren't required to have the same names, but in this case they do. You can see in the preview that the new table will include all of the columns from both data tables, including duplicate columns for the product ID. In this scenario, I want all of the columns from average product prices, but only two of the columns from products. I'll check the box next to Select Columns for Join Table and select all of the columns in average product prices. I'll hold down the Control key and select Product Category and Product Name from the Products table, and then I'll click Select. Now the preview shows that I'll have six columns in the new data table and 3,124 rows. Remember that there were 5,504 rows in the Products table, so why will the new table only have 3,124 rows? In the Matching Specification panel, one of the options is to include non-matches from either the main table, the width table, or both. By not checking either box, the new table will only include information about products that are shared by both tables. In this case, all of the products and average product prices are in the products table, but the products table contains information about products that are not in average product prices. I'll enter product summary for the output table name and click OK to create the join data table. The new data table has the price and descriptive information about the 3,124 products. The N rows column contains the total number of each product that was sold during the five-year period of the original data set, so let's rename that. Remember that one way to change a column name is to select the column in the data grid and start typing the new name. I'll enter total sold and then click in the upper left corner of the data grid to get out of editing mode. Because I used a command from the tables menu to create the join table, Jump saved a source script in the table panel. This script might provide some helpful information about where the table came from, but you can create one or more table variables to provide specific custom information about a data table. Table variables are stored in the table panel and are typically used to document information about the table, such as the origin of the data or details about the data. They can also be used to store values that are used in column formulas. But here we'll create a table variable with a description of the data. I'll click the red triangle next to Product Summary and select New Table Variable. You can have as many table variables as you'd like in a data table and give them any name. However, a table variable called Notes has a special property. The value of the Notes table variable will show up in the Open File dialog when you open the data table in Jump. I'll enter Notes for the name, and for the value I'll enter Product Price Data joined with Product Descriptions. After I click OK, you can see the Notes table variable stored in the table panel. I'll go ahead and save the data table with the given name.